This is Broadmoor Hospital for the criminally insane. This is where I met and married my husband, Ronnie Cray. It's also where Roy Shaw spent five years of his life. He is one hard bastard. Roy Shaw is one of Britain's most notorious villains. He spent over a third of his life banged up in 21 different nicks. He was a Category A man, high risk. Well, when you very first meet Roy, you know that he's a hard bastard. He doesn't, he's not a loud or brash man that's going to say, you know, I'll do you, I'll stab you, I'll shoot you. He's not going to do any of those things. But just look in his eyes and you know straight away that he's a, he's a hard bastard. He was known as the most dangerous and violent prisoner in the system. If you're unlucky enough to have Roy Shaw come after you, watch out, because hell comes with him. Do you know you got a reputation first? Well, yeah, when well, I walk in a place, yeah. I say, Roy Shaw is Roy Shaw. But it's, re it's a respectable reputation. Well, what makes you angry? Something like, you know, I don't know, I bullying? Just flare, or... right? Yeah, bullying. I don't like seeing anybody bullying anybody. Mm. And mm. if I was with a girl and someone start chatting up, yeah. I'd, uh, if, if flares up, you know, and um, I just want to whack them. Are you looking for? If you're a normal man in the street, um, or a girl, or a child, then you've got nothing to fear from Roy. But if you're a man and you cross him, then beware, because you'll be sorry. He's still got this thing in his head that he can't be beat. And if you said to him now, someone nut nutted that brick out the wall the other day with their head, nutted it out, bet you couldn't do it, then he'd have to have a go at all men like to poke fire, spit and have a fight. And Roy does all of those three things. <laughs> Roy's got it all. A nice gaff by Epping Forest in Essex, and he drives a Bentley Cornish. But Roy doesn't like to reveal his age, and I'll let you into a little secret. He might pop a cap in me ass, but he's the wrong side of 60. Okay. Now, these are what you take every day. Show me all the pills you take every day. Now, now this is called kelp. This helps to burn away the fat. Have a look. Kill. Roy takes handfuls of vitamins to keep the lead in his pencil, all washed down with cod liver oil. And it seems to work. Ginkgo biabla. This is helps your memory. What's wrong with your memory? Nothing, because you take these. When you get over, <laughs> when you get over, when you get over 35, you start, um, it starts fading away. I mean, you mean, sure, you know, I've got a good body, a young body. I try and try and try and there's no wrinkles here, and I think that's, it's, that's, a, good, skin. that's a good body. Mm. Yeah. Mm. For a 35-year-old. For a 35-year-old. Look at that. Well, he's even converted his spare room. That's the gym mm -hmm. where you have workouts. Quite often I have, I have better workouts than now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the love palace. <laughs> and when you share Roy's bed, you can sleep easy. Because like a boy scout, he's always prepared. Anything. There, anywhere. Uh, there you go, right through you. Yeah. What is it? Oh my lord. It's lead. Uh, no, it's a seasoned mat or some sort. You know, mm. it's, I took this off a colour geezer when I was done the cricket as a pub. What, well, he had it? Yeah, he had it, so I've kept, I've kept it ever since. What did you say? Excuse me, can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take that thing. <laughs> did you? Yeah. If anybody comes in here, they can get this through the red. Mm. In 1963, when he was in his late twenties, Roy was sent down for stealing 87 grand from a bullion van. That's a lot of dosh. In those days, only the great train robbers ever had a bigger touch. When he was doing the blags in the early 60s, a bank job was easy dough. There was no such thing as an armoured vehicle. It was like taking candy from a baby. We never had no guns, we just had a pickaxe handles. We never had to use them all at all, because they just smashed the window, keep in and they, they ain't going to fight, they ain't their money. But how did he get into villainy in the first place? Me mates that was with me, so, I mean, I was whacking people in dance halls and whatever, and I said, well, you keep whacking people and go out to prison for, you know, just for assault and things like that. If you could do anything like that, you might as well get some money for it. So they took me on, on you know, they was at the blags, and they took me on the blags, and, and that's, um, that's how it all started. What's up there? The love of his life is his rotties. 
Although Roy's always got a string of birds, he prefers to live on his Jack Jones. Of course, Roy's used to that. He's had plenty of practice. When I was in solitary, you didn't have no choice. You had to get used to it, you know, because you're on your own. But so I used to do workouts, just to press ups up the wall, do um, press ups up the wall. You learn to just just space yourself out, and time just goes by. Even in the nick, a trail of violence followed Roy. The geezer all cut, cut his throat. He, he was a cross. So they've got to be done. And, and uh, I mean, you know, I've done sex cases. I've stabbed them. And we, I mean, this place, it was in uh, Wandsworth. And uh, a screw came up and said, Roy, you know that bloke who raped them two little girls? He, go, yeah. he said, well, this is number 43. He said, um, when, I, when you come in off exercise, I'll be down that end of the landing. No, he's given us the wire. To, to do the geezer. So I mean, he was always with me, he uh, uh, went crazy. Check the hat. Check the hat. He, he, he was, game the game was a bygone. And we used to wait for him, and when they come in, we used to do them. Well, what stuff. makes you think you have the right to do that? Well, he's just made two little girls suffer and uh, kill them. Well, well, he, he needs prison. to be hurt, he's just got a bit of prison. And, and nowadays, they just put them in different bloody wings all together, you can't get at them. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, that's, I mean, putting them in prison I ain't punishment when they kill a little kid. I mean, that, that, oh, blimey, they, these, what's they call them, paedophiles, I mean, that, that, they've got the kids there for hours, you know, and they keep torturing them for hours, then they kill him. I mean, you want to feel sorry for them, they, they need cutting and all that. I'm on my way back to Broadmoor, where I used to visit my ex-husband, Ronnie Cray, at least twice a week. It's also where Roy done five years. He was certified insane because the ordinary nicks couldn't handle him. But in Broadmoor, they could give him the liquid kosh. Pump him up with drugs, that is. Roy would go into one on the landings, start tearing down doors and throwing officers about and knocking everybody out. And there was only one place really for him to go, and that is Broadmoor. In actual fact, Ronnie Cray went to visit uh, Roy Shaw in Broadmoor in 1963, before he was... Um, put into Broadmoor himself and Roy was having a bit of trouble with his wife at the time and Ron asked him if there's anything he could do and uh, he said he wanted the man taken care of who was playing about with his wife so Ron shot him, shot the man and he went out back up to see Roy in Broadmoor and um, he asked him, Roy, Ron asked him what it was like in Broadmoor and he said it's okay but it's full of um, gay guys and Ron just said Good, smashing. I've got butterflies in my tummy, I must be honest, coming back, because this is the only thing that I know about Ron is this drive here. So I think it's a bit sad. For many prisoners, Broadmoor is the end of the road, but for Roy, it was just another challenge. All right then, is that the roof where you was on? That's it, yeah. When you was yeah. protesting? Protesting, yeah. For day, for a whole day and night. Did they have to get you down? Yeah, the coach were down. Coach, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, with cakes yeah. and things? Well, uh, we, got, we got a few birds out the woman's room. <laughs> I don't think that would have coached you. <laughs> he was put in solitary, in what were called the dungeons, Broadmoor's hellhole. So they'd suck me in the refractory block, punishment block, for about, uh, about six months that time. And then I'd come out and... Uh, and then I've done the screws and went back for another nine months, solitary. When you say you've done the screws, what do you mean? You've I broke the them. chief's cheekbone and I whacked a few of the others. And I kept sticking needles on me and then I, I was so, couldn't stand up properly, like, I was so weak with a drug. One of them came and called Scott, I put sardines in his face, because that was what I was on to see. And nutted him. Nobody went to the camera and gave me some more, more injections and I stabbed me like a... Like a uh, like a doll, you know, couldn't do nothing. There's one boy in here called Dawn, and they let him out, and he went to a county hospital, and he, and he killed a screw in the county hospital, so sent him back in here. He said, oh, I'm never going to get out.